Good. I just had to do something with my screen here. Um, so Mallory, uh, so if you remember back, oh gosh, it's now been a couple years since she was our, our co-op student with choir. And so you remember her up there conducting and then singing. And um, of course, Mallory performed throughout the region for, for many years when, when she was living in, in the area. And, uh, and now she's at Queens pursuing her music degree. Oh. So yeah, so where are you, where are you coming from this morning, Mallory? I'm, I'm in Kingston. I'm living in Kingston full time now. Um, I just have a little apartment here that I'm studying in. But yeah, I'm living here full time. I've been living here since second year. Since second year. So what year are you in now? I'm in fourth year. I'm in my last oh, year. Wow. That went by fast. No. Oh, keep going. <laughs> fourth year. Oh my goodness. I know the time just kind of goes and when I was thinking about it I thought oh I think it's third year and then I re recalculated and yeah, yeah it flies by <laughs> oh for sure so tell us well maybe tell us about the the program you're doing like the, the studies that you're doing right yeah so I'm in the bachelor of music program at Queen's it's a four-year undergrad degree and I'm studying vocal performance so I'm mainly studying classical music and opera music um, but I'm also doing a certificate in law on the side. It's not like a minor, it's its own separate thing. Um, but I thought it would be fun to do that too, just on the side to kind of give me a break from singing every once in a while. A little thing on the side. <laughs> <laughs> a little law thing. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. So do you, I guess that's two separate departments then? Yes. The, yeah. yeah. So, okay. That's that's awesome. So is everything online this term? It's all online, which has been a huge oh. adjustment. Um, oh. My law course is pretty easy to put online. It's a lot of readings anyway, but transitioning from doing music in person to online has been crazy. Oh. Um, the profs are doing a great job. I think they got trained over the summer to do it. So my lessons are online and they're going pretty well, actually, considering everything. Um, we all need to make sure we have good internet speed. That's been really important, but it's been going pretty well. We do Zoom classes like this and our professor will just lecture to us over Zoom and we'll take notes. Um, so it's been okay. It's been going better than I thought it would. Isn't that, and are there any other platforms used or, or just Zoom? Just Zoom interesting okay that's that's good so how does the um oh like if so lessons are, are individual so you get those on on zoom just like we're all doing but what about the classes like the voice um are there choir things or 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 group yeah. classes yeah so I'm in a couple of choirs right now and those are interesting in the rehearsals we just mute ourselves and our, our director will conduct us and we'll just sing along to that. Uh, but for performances, he's asked us to just record us singing our part along to a track and we all send it into him and then he puts it together and we get to hear the final product of everyone singing. Wow. Um, so I haven't heard anything yet, but our first kind of performance should be coming up soonish. So it'll be exciting to hear how it all comes together. Yeah. Wow. And how many songs do you do? Like, how many does he do? We do about five per semester. Hmm. Yeah. Gosh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And I get, no, but is that just an online year? Like, or is that normally how much you do? I think it's an online year. Last year yeah. we were doing up to 10. Mm -hmm. So he's cut it down just yeah. to give us more time because we're recording it now. Um, but yeah, it's still a lot. Yeah, because by the time you learn all the line and then record it. Yeah. And wow. you do multiple takes of recording it too, because you've got to get like the perfect one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll chat about that after. Um, I see Linda's joining us. Morning. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, that work thing really cramps my style. <laughs> Oh, of course it does. Of course. Um, so Linda, I'll introduce you to our guest because I know that you, you have not met Mallory before. So Mallory is on the screen. Just give us a wave, Hi. Mallory. Um, Hi there. 
So Mallory was a, a, a student of mine in high school, and then, and she is also, did I introduce you to, to Elizabeth before? So Elizabeth, you give a, a wave. So Elizabeth used yes. to be our accompanist at choir before Ian. And uh, Elizabeth, uh, Mallory is Elizabeth's daughter. Anyway, so all music uh, and uh, Mallory is pursuing a vocal degree at Queen's. So she's in fourth year, and I, I thought it would be a great opportunity for people to see how much she's progressed and developed, but also get a sense of what music students are doing now. Um, so as we go on further, because Mallory's got songs for us uh, to listen to, if you have any questions, just throw them out to, to Mallory. There's no, you know, if you want to know something about what she's studying or what she's doing, just um, just shout it out. Mallory? Um, yeah. What's the ratio of male to female students? It is actually growing. So like in the vocal department, it's a lot smaller than other instruments, which I find interesting. But it, we're slowly growing. Um, Thomas Turney, who also is from Renfrew County, he just uh, accepted his offer to Queens in the summer. So he's here with us. And I think we have four more of our like 50 singers, so it's still very small, but yeah. we're growing, and that's really exciting. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. It it is interesting, and and uh, I think it's always been you know, like that, I, I think of all the, over the years, but probably now even more so. It, yeah. It's just, um, hmm. yeah, that's an interesting, interesting thing, and I bet they get lots of parts. Oh, they do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Being a male singer is I was awful. just thinking that, yes. Who, like there, there's so few voices yeah, and exactly. there's a lot of parts to be sung. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, interesting. Okay. I think we're up ready for our, our first song. So Mallory has um, three songs that she's done for us and we're going to do it the same way that we did the choir concert and and I was really happy to know because we we chatted last night at the session that Mallory you're doing it this way at school yes yeah so we have um, a class called voice studio and at, uh, once a week all of the voice students get together on zoom and a couple of us every week will show a piece that we're working on so we'll just share our screen and then everyone watches it and we get to talk about it. So it, it's just like this. That was, that's good because I, I, I didn't know if this was the best way to do it. It seemed to work okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, so that's good. So Mallory, you tell us about the first song that you uh, are going to, okay. to show us. So the first piece is called Notre Amour. It's by Gabriel Fauré. He's a French composer and he's one of my favorite composers, especially this piece. Um, it's a love song, it's called Our Love, and the singer just sings about how uh, her love with this man is light, it's sacred, it's um, infinite, it's eternal, and she's comparing it to like the breeze and the trees, uh, and just a bunch of beautiful things. It's really just a nice, pretty love song. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to ask is that if everybody can turn off their video, it does help with the um, how, how it comes through. And then I'm going to mute us all so that in case, whoops, oops, I'm, oh, here. Okay. Ah, just give me one second. <laughs>
Well done. Well done. Um, so if you want to unmute yourself. Whoopsie. Wow. <laughs> You've come a long way from music camp, Mallory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh dear. Just a sec. I sorry, I lost the screen for a second. <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness. We can still see you. Can you see me? Okay. Yeah. Um hmm. no, there. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. So, um, so you can all tell how much Mallory has has come and progressed. So, tell us a little bit about that that journey from when Mallory was was um, kind of in high school. Musical theater was a huge part of Mallory's studies and and what she liked to do. So, what what? Well, I was taking lessons at the beginning of high school with a lady named Diane Baird. And she works at Queen's University as a vocal teacher. So I knew like right from high school that I was gonna follow her there and study with her more because I really liked studying with her. But again, like Lisa said, my passion has always been musical theater. And so coming into this program where the focus was on classical music and opera singing, I had no idea what I was in for. So I came and I got thrown into like an opera ensemble in my first year and I got to be a part of opera scenes and uh, everyone in the program loved opera and classical music and so that kind of just came with me too. I started to fall in love with it in my lessons because we were focusing on it so much. Um, but I was kind of missing musical theater at the same time. So St. Lawrence College decided to partner with Queens just a couple of years ago, I think, when I first came to Queens, and they came up with a Bachelor of Musical Theatre degree that would be between St. Lawrence College and Queens University. So once they started getting the ball rolling with that, more music theatre also came to Queens, and I've been able to do both now, which has been so exciting to be able to work on both of them. That's cool. When, if you do a Bachelor of, of Musical Theatre degree, can you um, start that at Queen's or do you have to start at St. Lawrence? I believe you have to start at St. Lawrence. So you do two years there and then you come to Queen's for two years. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Excellent. Oh, that's, that's really good. Um, so tell us a little bit about the opera scenes that you, you did. What were some of the... So fun. So I was in first year when we did them and there's a class called Opera Ensemble. So uh, twice a year we perform different opera scenes in concert. And my first semester, it was an opera called The Beautiful Bridegroom. It's a very new uh, English opera about a woman who falls in love with who she thinks is a man, but he's actually a woman, but they fall in love anyway. And I played the woman that fell in love with this man. And my second semester was my favorite one because we did Cinderella. It was a French version of Cinderella and I got to play Cinderella. And instead of having me in a carriage, in the, you know, pumpkin carriage, they put me on rollerblades. So <laughs> I had to learn how to rollerblade about two weeks before tech week. And so I remember almost every day I would just rollerblade around the music building and try and you know, not fall on my face so that I could eventually sing opera while on rollerblades. <laughs> really singing high A's to, to yeah. uh, rollerblading. Oh my gosh, what you have to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was so fun. It was one of my favorite experiences. Oh, isn't that fun? Nancy. I'd like to ask you, um, how do you deal with the pronunciation in the foreign languages? You just did French, which maybe, maybe you're bilingual, but 
but you know, sometimes we're hearing opera in German or, or in Italian. How do you have a pronunciation coach? Right. So our vocal teachers are actually like phenomenal with pronunciation, and a lot of my training on diction comes from them. Um, but we also have different professors around the school who speak other languages. Uh, the cello prof, he's German, so I go to him whenever I have a German piece. And actually, a couple years ago, we had a vocal prof who's just retired last year, but she spoke Czech. Um, and you'll see in my next piece that I sing that I'm singing Czech. So I went to her for that pronunciation. Yeah. You we're really lucky. Well, you need the meaning, too, to, to give feeling to the song, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, yeah. Wonderful. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah. There's actually going to be a diction course offered next semester. So we'll learn even more about how to work our way through pieces in the language that we're not familiar with. Just yeah. out of curiosity, um, because every music program is, is a little bit different. Um, tell us how much time you get. Uh, well, maybe this year is different because it's online, but in, an, in a different year, how much time do you get with your accompanist? And like, do they give you a certain amount of hours with that kind of kind of thing with a coach? It's actually completely up to the student uh, because the accompanist fee is not included in our tuition. So it's really up to us. Some people rehearse once a week. Some people rehearse just a couple times a month. I tried to go every two weeks with my accompanist. Um, now that I'm doing recitals, I need to meet with them a little bit more because I have more time and more repertoire to work on. But I think most people try and aim for like every one, every two weeks. Okay. Yes. Because I, I know for, for both programs that I was in, you got a certain amount of hours. That's what I was wondering if, if you got yeah. that. Most schools, I think, are like that, where it's included in the tuition, but ours is separate. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> okay. Did you, did you have to find your own accompanist then, Mallory, or do they suggest people? They suggest people. Yeah, there's a list of like approved accompanists that you can choose from. So that's how I found mine. Good. Hmm. So the, the previous song, the foray, was that a track? Did, did you did you use a find a track? Yes. Yeah, all of the pieces um, that we're playing today, I just found YouTube links for because I, that's how I practice um, now. So I, yeah, I got really comfortable with these YouTube links. Yes. Yes, good. Okay, how about explain your next uh, your next piece for us? Yes, so this one, this is a, a Czech opera called Rusalka, and this opera aria is called Song to the Moon. And the story is basically the same as The Little Mermaid. This is about a water nymph named Rusalka who falls in love with a human prince. And this ar uh, aria comes at the beginning of the opera when she's just seen him and fallen in love with him. And so she's asking the moon to tell him of her love for him. And later on, she obviously becomes a human and gets her legs and gets to meet him. But at this point, she's just fallen in love with him and wants him to know. Okay, good. So I'll ask everyone to um, take their video off. <clears throat>
Mallory. <laughs> I love that one. That's fantastic. Woohoo. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Can everyone unmute themselves or or did I take turn something off? I'm having a day. I don't know. Oh good. <laughs> oh, that was amazing, Mallory. I love that piece. Me too. Oh, beautiful. Um so I have a question, maybe someone else does too, but I, can you tell us a little bit about the difference, like vocally, um, between musical theater and opera, you know, well, vocally or performance wise? Yeah, what? honestly, performance wise, there's not much of a difference. I think opera is a bit more still and more focused than music theater, but singing and technique wise, they're completely different things. Opera, um, you're trying to get more of like a vertical sound, you have a lower laryngeal position, and the t tone is just, you know, it's more like up and lifted. Whereas in music theater, the sound is very wide and it's bright and you have a higher laryngeal position. So that's something that I've still been trying to work on throughout my undergrad now that I'm kind of doing both, studying both, yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> it's it's so it's just so interesting as a teacher of young people before they hit this stage that you're at right up to up to grade twelve. Um, it's always a bit of a not a struggle. It's it's fascinating, but of course we do both, right? You know, you trying. You know, everybody likes to do musical theater, and but yet if you're going to prepare for a, a degree, uh, you know, you need to be doing the foray and the Italian and and all of that, and uh, and yet you haven't discovered at high school age all those things about your voice. Ah. So it's fantastic to just watch you and and see you're at that next level and you get to discover those things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In high school, it's so hard because our voices are still so young and they're still changing. Um, and even now, people say that I'm still very young in the opera world. So I'm my voice is still going to be changing constantly. But it's nice to be in university and be studying it every day because I find it's a lot more consistent now than it would have been in high school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Running to work and running to here and <laughs> dance and all sorts of things. Yeah. Excellent. Anyone I else? find these, these slow songs much harder to sing. I think you notice the technique and um, the breathing is everything. And that language also is a beautiful language to sing in. 
It is. Yeah. It's hard, definitely, singing the slower pieces because you have these sustained notes that you need to keep lifting and get that vibrato going. It's a lot trickier than, you know, the first piece where it was just words and words and words, um, which, you know, that's its own struggle trying to get all the diction out. But I do find it difficult singing these very slow pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So if you take a, a degree, say in Ottawa, compared to Queens, it, it, it sounds like Queens is, is there's only an opera um, degree and then in, in Ottawa, it's more classical or do you get to choose that as well? I, think, I don't know the differences between the institutions, I guess. Right, I think it's a combined like opera and classical music for both um, okay. programs. Yeah, I think they kind of have the same focus. Same with like Western and U of T. Okay. Yeah, that's, and it, and it's interesting as far as um, Queens has really developed, really, really developed. It wasn't years ago. Um, it wasn't really known so much for voice. Um, but now it's well with teachers like Diane and, um, and you've got teachers too that come from Montreal, don't you? In or Hawaii. Toronto? Yeah, there used to be one. Yeah, there used but, to be retired now but yeah there you go everywhere yeah so it's really it it's really built built up and and uh, which is great because it's so close to our area so yeah. you get to yeah. yeah good okay how oh actually maybe I'll ask you one more thing can yeah. you tell us a couple you did already a little bit but um a couple highlights that you've had yeah. so far in your career at Queens well definitely doing Cinderella and rollerblading around the music building <laughs> for two weeks that was so much fun that was my first time ever being part of like opera so it was such a fun first experience um oh what else oh well we were going to put on the rocky horror show in the spring obviously it got cancelled to covid but even just the rehearsal process of that was worth it that was enough for me. I was playing uh, Janet Weiss and it was just, it's such a fun show. It's so quirky and out there and it's like I've never done anything like that before and it was student run so there was a lot of collaboration with the directors and the production team so that was like probably my top highlight honestly was being a part of that. Um, and then another one is actually happening right now so there's a theater company in Kingston called Blue Canoe, and they often put on shows throughout the year, but obviously we can't do that right now. So over the summer, they thought it would be neat to put on like a Zoom cabaret. So over the summer, they put on Les Zoomerables, which was obviously Les Mis. <laughs> and it was just a cabaret style. Um, people would sing their song and then um, just record themselves singing it and then the production team put it all together and put it on YouTube for everyone to see. So it was a success over the summer and they've decided to do it again. And now we're doing Mamma Mia and I auditioned and I'm a part of that now. It's not uh, cast based on characters, it's cast based on song. So I have a couple of different songs sung by different characters in the show. And yeah, I'm gonna record that and then we'll put it all together. And on November 21st, we put it on YouTube. Look. just good. for your for yourself or for is it open it's open everybody? for everyone oh, yeah awesome. completely free anyone can like find the link and watch it good. I will be well, sharing sharing yes that. thank you <laughs> yeah I'm excited for that it'll be really fun but do they do dialogue as well or is it just songs just songs okay it'd be a copyright issue we tried to see if we could do dialogue but we need to make sure that we don't get in trouble with copyright so it's just music <laughs> just the music okay oh awesome okay and uh, how about introduce your your last song Mel? last piece this one this is one of my favorite characters this is from the opera la boheme um and this opera aria is called quando men Bo. it's sung by the character musetta and in this aria she's trying to get the attention of this man that she really likes so she's singing about how all the men love her and she just loves getting attention from other men, but really she just wants attention from this one man. <laughs> oh, opera. 
<laughs> All right. So again, you can turn off your your video and we'll enjoy this last uh, this last song. awesome I, I i love that at the end when you just oh <laughs> that's so you <laughs> oh that's good oh that's amazing so tell us about the the process for recording this do you... <laughs> oh my goodness i have to do it over so many times because i am so picky and like I think one of the great things about being on Zoom now is that we get to see ourselves and hear ourselves in a way that we never did doing this live. So now that we have that, I record myself and I watch it over and I'm like, I can't believe I was doing that. That's so weird. I don't, I don't like that. And so the recording process takes a lot longer than I think my mom has to go now. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, thank you, Lisa. It was nice to see everybody. Beautiful girl, my little princess. Love you. <laughs> you keep those grade 11 and 12s in line. Yeah. <laughs> Give me strength. I'll see you. <laughs> Bye, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have to do a lot of recordings to find one that I like. Um, like when I started doing these recordings, it took me like 10 takes to find one that I didn't hate. But now I think I've reduced it down to like five takes and then I can find one that I think is okay. <laughs> oh, I, I hear you. I, I know because I think with live performance and, and a live lesson, um, it flows. There, there's a certain flow and an energy and you don't stumble over those little specific details. Yeah. In the, not in the same way anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's good though, because you get to, you get to hear things that you wouldn't normally hear and you get to see yourself. Um, and like in my 
like lessons with Diane, I didn't ever look in the mirror. I avoided that at all costs. So now I have to see myself and I think it's been helping me improve. Oh, I think that's... it gives you growth because you're you relying on yourself to judge yourself, observe yourself, and not someone's outside view of you. But oh, exactly. And I think that that helps you grow as a performer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you get to kind of see what you like and what you want to kind of shape yourself to be, which mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good comment because I think I used to probably learn more watching other people than I did maybe if I was the one put on the spot in a class or something. And, and I think it's, it, yeah, it's like you're seeing yourself and, and being able to just be critical and constructive, you know, for yourself. Hmm. That's, that's great. So any other, any other things you're dying to ask Mallory <laughs> or tell her? I just am amazed with the range and uh, I think I have a six note range and I don't know, it feels like I do, but when you see, you know, you think, oh, you can't go higher than that, but you somehow do and it just, you know, raise your eyebrows and out comes the energy and it's, that's inspiring. Like I would, that's why I think we sing is just to see if we can get just that little tone better or that yeah. one more note or or whatever but yeah that's very inspiring absolutely thank you it took a lot of work to get my range to where it is <laughs> even just like the past year i've noticed it growing both like like higher and lower mm -hmm. so it's just a constant work in progress yeah thank you yeah, I think we can all from from hearing you back uh, from from when you were singing with us or singing in recitals here. Um, what a difference. And that's the way it should be. You're, mm -hmm. you're progressing and taking yeah. things on and taking lessons and just immersed and immersed with other people doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It is inspiring to be around like minded people who are also just working on themselves and wanting to be the best that they can be, too. We have such a small program at Queen's, so we all get to know each other really quickly and everyone becomes friends right away, which is just awesome. It's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, well, this is wonderful. I, it's so neat to see where everybody is ending up and where they're pursuing, you know, things and, and how they're getting along. And it's really inspiring, too, to, to see you're so positive and, you know, taking all these things on because you just have to, you're in your fourth yeah. year and, uh, and yeah, you just, just have to go with it and do the best yeah. you can. Yeah, exactly. Taking it day by day right now with the pandemic is <laughs> I think key. Yeah. yeah. And Mallory, what's your, um, plan for when you graduate? What are you, what's next? I don't have a plan yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still working on it. A lot of my profs have, uh, said that I should go into more school and take advantage of like this new remote learning so that I can maybe do something that wouldn't have been accessible um, without the pandemic. So I think I'm going to consider that maybe go into more school, train a little bit more before I get into the world. <laughs> and then what would you like to do though in, in the future? Definitely yeah. performing is number one. But now that I'm doing a certificate in law, I was thinking maybe I could go into that too. That might be interesting. A lot of people are like, oh, you could go into entertainment law because of your knowledge of music. Oh, but actually, wow. a lot of people who have a BMUS degree go into law and do entertainment law. So yeah. always a possibility. Wow. Yeah, I, when I was working, um, I, I had a background in music too, Mallory, and I went into law, not as a lawyer, but uh, as an assistant. And uh, part of my role was to, to uh, look through interviews. And it was very interesting to see in the CVs, the number of people who came to law that had a music background. I was very surprised. Yeah. And, yeah, it's quite interesting. It's not, it's not uncommon. So I guess yeah. you're on the right track. Yeah. yeah. Good options, that's for sure. That is interesting. Yeah. 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 It, it is, and, and when, when you, like the RCM who has a lot of, um, um, alumni, a lot of, um, um, what do they call that? Anyway, a, a lot of alumni are scientists, engineers, law. It, it's, it's very interesting. And, and, uh, and I always tell students, probably told you, Mallory, at the time that 
RCM, Royal Conservatory of Music and voice and singing lessons or, or piano really go well on a CV, yes. on, on a, on a yeah. you know, not just for um, anything musical, but just a job in, in yeah. general. People really know. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, this has just been really, really great. So we really appreciate you doing this uh, with us this Thank week, Mallory. You. How great. <laughs> what a nice way to spend a, a rainy Thursday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's rainy here too, actually. It's not super nice out. So this is lovely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's awesome. So um, thank you again. And we're so happy to hear how well you're doing. And, uh, and it was really great to, uh, to both see you and, ch and chat with you and hear you. Yeah, so nice to hear from all of you too. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. <laughs> awesome. So I'll see everybody next week. And, uh, and we'll do more singing. Thanks. Thanks, Mallory. Bye, Mallory. Oh, thank, thank you. Mallory. Thank you. Mallory. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Good to see everybody. <laughs> Bye. Take care.